Okay. Uh, one other, I'm going to do one and a half more things <laughs> to show you. And once again, I'm basically just giving you resources this week because these are things you can pull back out at a later time when you're using them. If you're a general ed teacher or a special ed teacher, I highly recommend that you download this and keep it in a safe place because this is one of the best documents for just accommodations for specialized teaching. And remember, if you can use a strategy with a student with special needs, chances are you can use it with the whole class. So if you have a couple students who have some kind of an issue with comprehension or writing, there are chances that students without disabilities could have the same issue. So if you make a graphic organizer or scaffold the assignment, you can do it for all the students and I'm sure it will benefit them. So here is, we'll get past some of the verbiage. This is fantastic. It's specifically, yes, designed for IEPs, but you can also use some of these in your general ed classrooms as well. If you are writing an IEP, you have to give information about the student's communication. And at the end of the document, on every IEP, you have to give specially designed instruction, we call SDI, I'm so used to calling SDI, I don't remember <laughs> the full term sometimes. Uh, and then there's SAS, this is Supplementary Aids and Services. There is a section on the bottom where you have to put specific strategies that are related to their area of concern. So some students could have communication issues like we talked about, some of you are doing projects on that. Uh, listening comprehension issues. There's, once again, that's, these are all voice fluency, all related to speech and language uh, disabilities, receptive language, pragmatics, academics. This is where you could honestly, those of you who are tutoring and students are having issues, you could draw strategies from this list as well. And once again, if you are going to be a special ed teacher, you have to have you know, some strategies specifically to write in the document for SDI and SAS, and you can pull them directly from this document. It's a beautiful thing. So if your student is struggling with basic reading, there's a whole list here of strategies that are known to help students in this area. If you're doing your group project and you need some help thinking of some more strategies, you can come and find some and then go look them up and see how they actually work in the classroom and present those. Reading comprehension, loads of strategies here, written language, math and calculation. Um, these are vocational. So if they're having, we talked about this with our students who had intellectual disabilities. Oftentimes there's a deficit in vocational abilities and, you know, eating, tying your shoes, counting, some of those things that they're just struggling to do, this list will help these students. They have task completion and on-task behavior. If your students are struggling with that. So I'm telling you, this is an endless resource following directions. What happens if your students aren't doing that? It's, it's all right here. Um, if the rate of their speed following a schedule, attendance, if they are not organized and you need to teach them organizational skills, teaching them how to work independently. Maybe you have that student who's always at your desk asking questions and never wants to work on their own because either they feel stuck or maybe they like your attention. It's attention seeking behaviors potentially. You have, I mean, this is just such a great resource. I absolutely loved using this when I was in the field and plus even today, physical functioning. So I'm just, going through these so that you know what's available to you. And it, it breaks down everything. I know this document is a little bit outdated. It's from 2010, but the, they're still the same strategies typically. Um, these are early intervening strategies. So if you ever work with students prior to kindergarten or preschool, you can use these for really young students. Those of you who are 
in elementary environments. I mean, it, it just, it literally goes on and on. So um, lesson plan development. These are, it says, use these instructional strategies and materials to assist your students in making progress through the program of studies. Gives you all kinds of strategies. So those of you who were looking for, hey, how do I accommodate a student with this disability or who's struggling with this or how do I make my lessons more engaging and have differentiation? This document is beautiful. Keep this at hand as soon as you start teaching. Um, so you get the point. I would suggest going through this and honestly, I would print a copy. If you're tutoring, keep it on your desk at all times. You get my point, but I think you're really going to benefit from that document. Another resource I wanted to offer you. Uh, let's see here. Well, this one's less of, I'd say, a resource, but just kind of putting all the pieces together for you because this is what an IEP document could look like. And I'm going to talk about this from the perspective of a general ed teacher first and start there because I know a lot of you are going to be general ed teachers or some of you are both. You're special ed and general ed certified. So I'm going to talk about it in this respect first. Um, as you can see here, the document is, let's see, 10 pages long. They can even get up to 12. So you can tell that a special ed teacher puts in a lot of work. So that when I say be kind to them and support them, I really do mean it because they, they would appreciate it as well. And and just realize too, as a general ed teacher, if you have a, a co-teacher and you know they have a huge IEP meeting coming up and they got to get this document done and they're really stressed, that might be a day you would say, hey, I've got the class for today. Just take this half hour and go get that done. Like if, if you truly are good, the students are doing what they need to do, that's one way you can be supportive to them. I wouldn't do that every day or make it a habit so that they're just skipping out on your class. <laughs> but if you have a good relationship with them and you can tell they're extremely stressed, I would say that's a very kind thing for you to do. Um, so as you can tell on this document, I'm gonna just hit the highlights from a general ed teacher perspective, just so you know what is coming to you, what, your, what you will see at an IEP meeting. So first thing first, they, at the very top of the document, when you get a copy, you're gonna see how much of the day they're in a general ed program, so this is 40 to 80% of the day. This student in particular has a mild mental disability and gives their information, their grade. So when I was talking about the pleasant, <laughs> you all, I'm losing my speech after <laughs> this long day, but present level of academic achievement and functional performance. You can see here with communication status, an academic performance. You have to defend how are they doing? Are they performing commensurate with similar age peers? And that just means, you know, are they able to use communication strategies that their peers on their grade level are able to use? If yes, and they have no communication issues whatsoever, you check the box and then you, you have to write a little statement about why and just say they are on grade level, here are their scores. You have to back everything on this document with data that you either get on standardized testing or that you've collected in your graphs. Remember that a lot of times special ed graphs look a lot like our baseline intervention graphs. You take three to five days worth of data before the intervention, put the intervention in place, and then you monitor it on a line graph typically. So the data that you get from that, you can put in your document. And teachers, general ed teachers, have to, you know, document some things like that too. So they might come to you and say, hi, I wanted to see if I could get some information from you. Special ed and general ed teachers work hand in hand on putting this together. So keep that in mind. They might ask you for this. Academic performance as well. If they have no academic issues and they more so have social or communication issues, 
then you can check that box and say it's commensurate with same age peers. Um, let's see if there's anything. With academics, this is a very long section because you, if they are not commensurate with same age peers and they are struggling with academics, you have to go through each area. So they covered reading, math, written language, whichever areas they're struggling with, you have to write about each one and then provide data to back it up. So keep that in mind that if you are a general ed teacher, your special ed teacher, co-teacher will probably come to you and ask to either work on this together or have questions or see if you have any data that they could also use. Also keep in mind that the goals that are created typically reflect this present level section. If they have a communication issue, you have to have one goal that's related to communication, one goal that's related to reading, one goal that's related to math. So as you can tell, the goals add up very quickly and you have to monitor goals for every student every day. And it's a lot that you have to find some efficient ways to collect this data. That way you don't feel behind or stressed about it. It's going to ask about their social and emotional status as well. So once again, if they're commensurate with same age peers, you can check the box. If you have a student who has emotional behavior disorder, the chances of you checking that box are very slim. Typically, there is some negative impact that is causing them to have this IEP. And you have to describe a typical, their typical interactions, how they work with others, how they work in a classroom with teachers, and you have to be very descriptive about it. General intelligence is also something you have to write about. And typically that is checked unless they have an intellectual disability or the student has a mild to moderate disability. And then you will get your information from assessments that are administered from a psychologist or the person in charge of the special education department could have this as well. Transition needs is my favorite area. Usually you don't have to worry about this until they're about 16 years of age, but you can, if they're an eighth through eighth grade or 14 years old, they can check the box if it's an official need for them. These are just a bunch of questions that they answer about uh, limited English proficiency, they have communication needs, deaf or hard of hearing. This includes all the details. You know, we talked about high incidence and low incidence. I think all this will click more with you now that you've seen all these other aspects. Then right after that, you get into the measurable annual goals and benchmarks, and you have to create goals for each student for each area that they're struggling in. Like I said, it has to reflect the present levels. And this is a section for general ed teachers to keep in mind because you also have to be mindful of what their goals are because at times some students do not have a special ed teacher in the classroom, but you still have students with an IEP in your room and you're teaching by yourself and you are responsible for their IEP as well, even if a special ed teacher is not present in the room. So you have to get a list of all the IEPs for the students that are going to be in your classes and be familiar with what types of goals because you can make your lessons reflect this. It says here, given objects or pictures of objects that differ in only one attribute and asked, show me the adjective one, Candace will do so with 80% accuracy. So if you're an English teacher or you're an elementary and you're responsible for the English part of your grade level that you're teaching, you can work on adjectives and say, okay, the other students need this too, but I'm gonna really focus and make sure Candace is getting this. You remember I said on that document with all the different strategies, that long one with everything you could ever ask for, this is where you have to write specifically design instruction. And it gives you a list on that document. Remember it had SDI, well, it might be backwards to you once you watch this, SDI and SAS. This is where you place the SDI accommodations. You have, see the student has a lot of goals and the special ed teacher has to monitor each one of these. So this is goal four. 
these are the short benchmarks. So there are the long ones, but then they also can break it down and say, here are the four things they need to do. And that's a very good place for general ed teachers to look because it's quick, concise, and you could see it. Uh, the special ed teachers are probably more concerned with the more detailed ones. All right. Seven goals so far, lots of goals. And then this is the supplementary aids and services, what I call SAS, right? And that document that I gave you with the two sides with all the strategies tells you exactly what you can write in SDI and what to write in SAS. So keep keep a hold of that document. Lots of things. One thing I do notice that teachers do, especially special ed teachers or when general ed teachers are helping with when they interview them and want to know what general ed teachers think, each year it becomes very tempting to say, if this was Candace's document last year, I'm just going to copy the whole thing over. And sometimes people just make I've seen this happen, make up things to put in here that don't even make sense for them. Maybe they don't even have any issues with math, but then they add calculator. And I've seen teachers just want to get this thing done and they just start grabbing and putting whatever comes to their mind. So make sure it is specifically whatever their strategies are, are directly related to their present levels and what they're struggling with. And keep in mind too that by law, it says statement of supplementary aids and services to be provided to the child on behalf of the child. This is what you as a general ed teacher has to implement. So when you get this document and if, if your school for some reason doesn't give you the students IEPs for your classroom, ask for them because you are legally responsible to implement these. Go right down to this section, supplementary aids and services and make sure you are doing what it says. So if you're a math teacher or you're teaching math in elementary and it says Candace has to have a calculator, make sure you have a calculator whenever you do math for her. It's, it's basically that simple. And special ed teachers, the more things you put here that are not necessary for the student, it just makes it harder on everybody at the end of the day because it gets overwhelming to implement all of these strategies. Now, if she needs them all by means, make a, a whole list. But if it's just something to fill a, a gap because you can't think of what else to say, then just don't write it down. That's just my <laughs> words of wisdom there. This is also general ed teachers and special ed teachers critical. This is by law has to be implemented. So for example, Candace, whenever this is about state testing or testing in the classroom. Whenever you give a test, check your students who have an IEP and make sure and see what types of assessment accommodations they have to be given. If, for example, Candace needs a scribe and you're in the classroom by yourself, you don't have a co-teacher, on test days you might want to talk to a special ed teacher in the school and say, hey, on my test days, I'll tell you a week in advance, could you come to my classroom and help my student with scribing? Because by law, I have to do that on every test that she gets. Keep that in mind. That's very important for you to know. Um, I talked about LRE, least, least restrictive environment. It tells you exactly where the student will be, which subjects that they're going to receive special education help, this, so these would be their resource classrooms, right? These would be the co-teaching where it's general ed and special ed together. And then this is regular ed only. She has no support from a special ed teacher in those settings. This is when you as a general ed teacher have Candace with all the same struggles that were listed on this document, but she has no special education support. It's only you. That's why it's important that you read these documents. And this is just how long she's in each room and see resource for reading, resource for writing, resource for math, and it tells exactly how long she has to be there. Okay, we made it through the document. You have at least, hopefully you've been sticking with me because I know it's a lot, but it's incredibly crucial for when you get to the school that you know what's coming 
and that you know what to do. And as a general ed teacher and a special ed teacher, what you should really focus on when you get students in your room with an IEP. And so at least you've seen the document. It won't scare you tremendously when someone hands you a 12 page mini book and you'll know exactly what to look for.